Hello, Mike. Hello, Arun. Hello, Kayo and Mike. Hi, Arun. How are you? Hi, Kayo. All good. All good. And you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. So nice to meet you, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, and same here. Thanks a lot. All right. Are you an iOS developer? Yes, I'm an iOS developer. For how long? Uh, from last eight years. Eight years. Wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> long time. Awesome. Yeah. And how can we help you? Uh, I have a couple of questions which I normally encounter in my day-to-day -day life. And mm -hmm. I believe uh, the same will be for many developers uh, who are working in big teams or small teams. These are all my experiences, my doubts, my questions. Like, uh, hope it will help for other developers too. Awesome. What is the first one? Uh, the first one is uh, uh, related to the TTD. Like, uh, if you see that complete now, the number of apps became more and TTD people writing code is also more. And recently, I made one small app. And uh, I started um, with TTD approach, like uh, start with a test case and try to refactor, see the red color and then make it green. And I try to implement that logics and I did uh, almost uh, uh, four or five screens. And then mm -hmm. uh, I started, like I started writing more production code instead of test cases. Like I started uh, writing production code and uh, I, the, if you see the overall, the coverage got reduced, and even I ended up like more production code. Right. So for these cases, like how you will suggest, like what type of mind we should make? Uh, so to that was a professional continue. project, right? Uh, or it's a side a, project. It's a side project, but uh, I can say it like um, I took it seriously while creating all the steps, but still i deviated to production code it's my personal project it's not for anyone it's my own i can give time for myself for more but still right. i ended up writing more production code so there was no pressure of time exactly yes <laughs> i can say yes but still i lost the grip right yeah that that's first of all that's absolutely normal especially in the beginning when you're getting used to a new practice to a new technique you know it, it's normal to go back to what you know Right, you, yeah. you have you said already like eight, ten years experience as a developer, without writing tests first. So your instinct is to write the production code first, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's about changing the mindset, especially when you're practicing. You don't have any pressure, you know, from your boss telling you that you need to deliver something very quickly. You need to follow the process when you're practicing, because that's when you're going to become faster and proficient at this new technique. Yeah. OK. So any tips like uh, to make ourselves uh, uh, more concentrated on what we decided? Like while starting the project, I thought like I should go with TDD. Yeah. But, but um, uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So but what, uh, somehow I ended up like writing more uh, production code instead of cases. Any tips like to stick to that? Yeah, my tip is if it happens, like become aware of it, that it happened, maybe even commit and then go back one step and say, okay, like I, I implemented more of the, of the production code without my test. Let me write the test first to prove that the production code works, right? So there's there's some missing test code there that must be added. So it, it, it's fine, you know. Like once you realize that you just have more production code, stop there. You know, that's like the the discipline part of this process. You need to stop there and just move a couple steps back. So I would say undo the code you wrote without tests. You know, as Mike said, you can commit it to a temporary commit, delete it, and write the test first. Yep go back to the first step, you know? Exactly. As soon as you realize, oh, I went too far with production code. I don't have a test for that. You stop and you go back, undo. That's right. So uh, I, I have a similar, like the same uh, testing related, like uh, I have in my day-to-day -day life, I work on a big project, 
which is which is built for, i guess i can say it like from last 4 5 years from many developers in and out so i we have a large chunk of code and consider i am changing one line of code in any uh, some for a new bug fix enhancement consider an enhancement with couple mm-hmm. of lines that time again the time is one constraint we end up like don't write the test case for the complete class we'll write it for a small chunk and then again we'll lose the track even that is also one that i faced in my day to day life yeah it's important to add tests especially when you're fixing a bug because it's so easy to introduce the bug again if you don't have nothing preventing that from happening right it already happened once what are the chances it's going to happen twice yeah exactly <laughs> very exactly. likely it will so yeah it goes back to the discipline of writing the test first to prove that you understand the bug right that you can replicate it reliably <laughs> Exactly. And then you make the test pass proving that you fixed the bug and you will not ever going to have regressions ever again related to that specific bug. That's it. Right. It's, it's proof that it exists and then insurance, you know, that it <laughs> won't exist in the future. I got it. And uh, from your uh, courses, I really learned how to write the especially TDD approach. And even for the network layer, I really got more inputs from that thank you for that content awesome yeah. thank you now practice 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 because then time is not going to be a problem because the more you practice the faster the more proficient you will be at tdd and you'll be able to apply it at work and be even faster than before yeah it's normal set the right expectations that in the beginning it's going to slow down you know you have a lot of experience as a developer you are a senior already So don't compare your speed without tests with tests. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Until yeah, you nice become one. very proficient at testing, then you can compare and you see that you can be even faster by writing the tests. That's great. Yeah. So I have another normal. question. Yeah, sorry, just just to just to to say one more thing it's absolutely normal again as Cairo said in the beginning like this is exactly how i learned for example you know it's it, it's it's one of those stages that y- you need to pass through it's, it's absolutely fine so don't don't worry about that it's Just part of the process yeah exactly <laughs> so so i can consider it as a learning process and then every time if you feel like production code is more make it reduce or delete it and write first test and then move back to production absolutely that's make that makes sense yeah that's it learn the concepts and examples as you see in the program right in the course yes you have access to the concepts and examples now your part is practice and repeat this cycle over and over and over again that's it perfect yeah got it So I have another question, which um, I guess many developers in their day-to-day life, again, it's, it's a problem with the perception maybe. So what happens is whenever I see someone else code, for example, in a PR or in a, some other blog or someone, I see, I feel like the code was very nice and how they made it. Like they, I really get impressed with their code. Sometimes I also write like that, but I lost, uh, I, I am very much scared or maybe I have less confidence over the code which I have written. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes even I feel like a little scary with respect to rising a PR to my peer members, even though they are all like uh, my friends. Sometimes I feel like that. That That's really, uh, I re- checked with some other people who are in like me in my normal uh, friends zone, not a professional friends, like, who are developer in different technologies but i heard from them also same like uh, th- even though they write a good code some are lack of confidence while writing a pr or lack of confidence on the code to put it uh, consider you created some nice chunk of code in a property wrapper and you want mm-hmm. to create a blog and we the, for me it's like a confidence like again whether it will be a good one or not Maybe so many bad comments will come, and again I lose confidence, and I don't do that one. That's a, that's the biggest problem of what I have right now. Even uh, I would like to hear some inputs from your side, so that I can uh, make myself uh, more confident. Right. 
yeah, again, that's absolutely normal. I remember when we were starting the YouTube channel here, for example, you know, like putting your code, your work publicly for everyone to judge, <laughs> you know, yeah. open on GitHub and writing blog posts. And yeah, like it's normal. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely normal to feel, I don't know, fear of judgment, right? But it's one of the best things that can happen because if someone points out that, oh, you missed something here, you're going to learn, right? I right. think it's only positive. Like, of course, the fear is there and it may feel negative. But if you really think about it, the feedback you get, even from creating a PR from your peers, and let's say, what if they send too many comments? Well, fantastic. You're going to learn a lot very quickly, exactly. right? Yeah. Especially with your peers, like, as you said, if you ask them, they have the same fear you have. So maybe talking about it in team sessions, you know, can help other people also say, hey, I also have the same fear. It's like, no, but your code is awesome. Yeah, I know, but I still have that fear, you know, just by talking about it. You see that it's not just you. Everyone has the same, uh, what is it called, imposter syndrome? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right, right, right. You are right. Everyone, right. everyone has it, you know. Only psychopaths probably don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So even uh, uh, last uh, couple of days back, I thought to write a blog and uh, be created nice stuff on property wrappers. And then I didn't post it. I felt like so many blogs are already there or maybe this is not mm. the right one. And then I felt uh, yes. maybe maybe it need more content. Then I didn't post it anyway. Right. So you were posting the content thinking that what, what going to people think about it, right? Exactly. Why don't you post something saying, hey, I'm documenting what I'm learning so I can come back here in the future. And, you know, because you learn a lot of things and you forget. But if you document what you learn, the steps you took to get there, it can be helpful to you, not just to the audience. So write the blog Absolutely. post for you. You know, write it for you. Like, would I want to see this blog post? Would I be like... Let's say you're learning about property wrappers for a very specific use case and you didn't know how to do it. So you need to do some research and you come up with a solution. You were very happy with it. Wouldn't you be happy to see this blog post when you're looking for the solution? Got it. All right. So write a blog post that you wish you had. Yeah, and write it for, right. you, for your own purposes. No, like blog is about you logging your learning journey. Got and it. it might be helpful to some other people, but don't do it to please other, because you cannot yeah. please everyone. If so so I will keep everyone, writing the same, like uh, the stuff what I prepare, I will put it in a blog or uh, I will make the PR and I will take the positive notes from them. And, I, and it's always like how I wished and how I have written. And in the next, it will be like corrections. Feedback is good. It's part of the learning. You know, it's going to accelerate your learning. The more feedback you get, constructive feedback. There are some people that don't gonna, they're not going to give you constructive feedback. Just ignore them. Yeah. You know, and you have a community there that you can post your uh, your articles, your PRs in there as well. And you can get feedback from a community of people that care. You know, Perfect. and that's going to give you good feedback, constructive feedback. Perfect. I really like what you're saying, Kayo, about framing how you're going to present your your work. Because if you, for example, are starting out in property wrappers, TDD, whatever, right? And you 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 publish something and but you have this idea of like, okay, I'm presenting to the world like this is how it, it needs to be, right? Like this is this is how you do this specific thing, whatever it is, right? then you, you might you might be feeling that yeah like the the like I, I don't possess the the top skills on this subject right so the critique might be too much for you but if you if you start you know if you frame it in such in a way that you're gradually starting out you know and you're documenting your process as you learn right well you're documenting your process as you learn you, you don't know all these answers right so you don't have all the all the answers. So yeah, I, I really like that. 
Yeah, because exactly. I see many blog posts saying something like, this is the way you need to do something. Yeah, yeah. If you write a post like this, it means that everyone that is not following that is doing it wrong. And then everyone's going to fight back and say, no, I'm not wrong because of this, 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 and that, right? Because you're trying to enforce an idea into everyone else. But if you write and say, hey, this is how I solve problem X in context Y, and it worked really well for me, maybe it's going to work well for you as well. Yeah. And I'm open, like, how would you solve it? You know, you can right. even leave a question open for the audience. Someone might say, hey, in your case, I wouldn't use a property wrapper. Actually, I would use a decorator. Well, I don't know. And then you learn something new, a different way of solving that exact same problem as well, if someone is open to give you feedback. Exactly. And I also faced one more, like, uh, whenever uh, we have a conversation, like uh, uh, any comments or uh, like that, I feel communication is also one of the improvement which I need to do. Uh, maybe that is one skill which is highly required, especially while using the terms. Like for example, uh, if I tell like I divided my project into a couple of files, then it will be like a, not a meaningful. If I say I decomposed my module into uh, decomposed, then that word makes sense, like uh, more more meaningful. So even those words are also like a matter. I feel communication also we need to improve. Uh, as an added point, like whatever you guys said, yeah. that is also good thing, like taking positive feedback and writing in my opinion, or I wish, or I want to do like this, taking the feedback. And mm -hmm. I guess I need to improve on the trade of some, point, some um, words, especially in the software industry. Like we use trade-offs, decomposition, dependency injection. If you don't know, like uh, I know one guy who is using dependency injection really very nice, but he don't know that it will be called as a dependency injection. I, I, I right. uh, honestly say like I know people uh, really write good code, but uh, they don't know the meaning of trade-off, why we call it as a, why we call trade-off. So I guess that is also one uh, noted point from your side, like I got just now. Yeah, it's like guitar. You can learn how to play guitar just by listening songs and fiddling around. But someone comes and say, "Hey, do a C minor," and it's like, "What? What is that?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can play exactly. the guitar. You can you can play the C minor. You just don't know how it's called. And then it, it's very hard to communicate or to teach others. You know, and the more senior you become, you're gonna have junior people in your team, and you need to communicate with them. You need to have like a clear way of passing this knowledge forward. You know, you need to have names, concepts that help you communicate. Oh those ideas yeah. to someone else otherwise it's just about feeling right you can be a very good developer very experienced but you cannot pass the knowledge forward you cannot work with others right you can only work alone as a solo developer exactly so that's that's very important that's why we say that these three parts are very important the concepts the examples or the practice because if you only see examples you're gonna learn some patterns in your head but you cannot understand the concepts to be able to communicate this to someone else and teach someone else, right? That's why you also need the concepts and go so, through so all to, those three ways of learning here. So to get the concepts uh, like uh, with the more um, conceptually, like uh, I, I would like to know, like, will you suggest to read the book and get the concept and then do some examples or from examples, get concept? What do you suggest? Like from example, get the concept or read the concept, understand what it is, and then do some examples. Everyone yeah. learns differently, Both. you know? Yeah. Both are fine. You can learn by example. Just like you said, you have a friend that knows uh, dependency injection. He does it very nicely, but maybe he cannot communicate clearly what he's doing. He doesn't know the name of the patterns to be able to you know, pass the knowledge forward. It's because he got a bunch of example and it works, you know, you can skip this step. But then if you learn, you go back to the concept. When you read about the concept, it's going to be very easy to fit the pattern with the concept and say, oh, I've been doing this all my life. I just didn't know how it was called. Yeah. You know, so yes, you can start with example and then learn the concepts or you can learn the concepts and then see examples. Some people prefer to start with books. Some others prefer to just look at examples first. I like to start with examples and then I learn the yeah. concepts. Even I like to say. Yeah, yeah. It, it depends on the subject as well, I believe. You know, like for example, maybe, I don't know, like you have 
um, test driven development, you know, or domain driven development, uh, domain driven design, sorry. Um, you know, these are probably better to see them, you know, if you start a book, you know, like this is the conceptual part first, you know, and then you're going to be um, mm -hmm. exposed to the examples, you know, like, on the other hand, if you if you read a blog uh, or I don't know, like an article somewhere on the internet, probably it's probably going to be more of the example kind of, but of course, that, that's these are not rules, you know, so the medium, I believe, plays a, a significant role uh, in this. And I, in my opinion, it should be both. Like you, you should, you should uh, strive for for both. Um, you know, learning conceptually first, and and then by example, and vice versa. Which one is first doesn't matter, yeah. but it's important that you learn the concept as well. If you prefer examples first, that's fine. You know, yeah. Like I'm a visual learner. I like to see stuff. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, got but. It. If I only learn by example, I might be missing some important concepts to fully understand the practice, the principle. So it's important to learn with these three steps here. Yeah. Perfect. So, so it's a big uh, emphasis I on would... practice and application. Like, don't forget. Yeah. Exactly. This exactly. is the most important. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat also. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I really uh, doing a lot of stuff after from the last couple of uh, uh, like I can say it like last one one and a half year. Even my technical skill, I can say myself grown a little bit higher. This is all because of uh, practice and uh, considering every small thing like trade offs, pointing out the trade offs, and whatever I am learning. Uh, that's really. I'm feeling the change with the practice. Absolutely. Of course. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And uh, uh, I'd like to follow for the next question, uh, mm -hmm. which I have in my mind from so many days uh, related to the design patterns. OK, nowadays, uh, uh, I started in 2012, that time, uh, Oh, many of the projects, whatever I saw, or maybe I have written some code, they are all into MVC. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, this view controller huge, even that time also it was huge. Okay, Even now people, the same reason I heard from so many places, new view controllers are huge, we are moving to MVVM. View controllers are huge, we are moving to some Viper. But I feel for some scenarios or for some uh, for some requirement, I feel even MVC is a fine. No, no need to worry. And the design patterns always it's like a suggestion. If you follow that pattern, it's a template type MVVM. If you follow, you may end have a loosely coupled, and we can have uh, other advantages. That is what they say. But I can see nowadays, like even for small requirement, even myself, I'm blindly going for MVVM. I'm mm -hmm. just writing a view model, and then again. Uh, Creating view controller simply, but literally not required uh, in the, for that specific requirement. So how we should make the decision? Like um, what you guys will say on that? I'd like to hear. First of all, there's nothing wrong with MVC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. And there's it's nothing like... wrong with MVVM. You know, they are just yeah. patterns, and they patterns. both work pretty well. It depends how you exactly. apply them, right? Exactly. Like if you really study the MVC pattern and you break down your application into many tiny MVCs, it's going to work just fine. Because if you do exactly what you're doing with MVC in MVVM, you do, you're going to end up with a massive view model, right? <laughs> if you have right, problems right. with MVC and you follow exactly the same in MVVM, you're going to have the same problems, you know, because the problem is not the pattern, it's how it's being applied, right? Right. So with that said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's mostly nowadays, I would say it's a personal choice, like a team choice. We're going to use MVC uh, and VVM because you want to have some, what is the word? Uh, consistency. You want a consistency in the app. So if I use MVVM, every view you create, you follow the MVVM pattern in the UI side, right? I, I have recently experienced this one. I was creating a, just a login screen. And uh, it's a one, it's not localized, which means always in English, mm -hmm. and it has two text fields and one button. 
like a username password and one simple button and uh, after the business logic for the validation of the email uh, and the password like uh, phone number more and i just simply send it to the server to do the validation other validation in that scenario i really felt like why i am making more more code but uh, yeah i agree sometimes making consistency is also one thing throughout the app maintaining so that new developers won't get confused but i got this question at that time why i am writing so much but if this is a small <laughs> module why to write more and uh, if it is giving our loosely coupled and uh, testing then uh, i believe it's a uh, tell about uh, how we will take this the same pattern absolutely yeah. especially that that's why i don't like big like template patterns like viper exactly because of this problem sometimes you want just a very simple login screen with two buttons no localization of me but if you follow the template you know you copy and paste the template you're going to have a presenter an interactor an entity like you're going to have a bunch of things that you don't need just to fill the gaps in the template yeah makes sense yeah yeah you, so, you need to solve your problems you know based on your needs on your requirements that's the most important thing you know yeah because the viper template it is a template that you can just literally follow copy and paste the the template and just fill the gaps but they also say that like if you don't need a router don't have a router if you don't need a presenter don't have a presenter but usually when you see code bases following the pattern they just blindly follow the pattern and have and separate every simple feature into all those layers unnecessarily okay right yeah. that's why I, i would prefer to use something like if we talk about the ui okay mvvm even if you add a view model when you don't need it the damage is not that high right it's just one exactly. one tiny view model there right but if you had five new files every time you add a simple feature <laughs> maybe that's not the way to go exactly got it so it's all about the decision what we make it's a yeah. team decision as well you know we're going to have to talk to your team and say hey we're going to be every time we create a a ui we, in this code base here we follow mvvm you know Perfect. so the logic will be you know presentation logic will be in the view model the view controllers or the swift ui views will only deal with the views side yeah and, and it's there's not a clear the... pattern mm -hmm. sorry yeah go on sorry yeah it, it should not be a priority you know like the priority should be to follow good practices and good principles separation of concerns you know and then whatever the the team chooses uh uh you know you're, you're going to go with that and i don't know if you if you've seen it in the course but like it's very like once you have once you follow uh good practices and good principles and you have the proper proper separation of concerns you can very easily switch from one pattern to another from mvc to mvvm to mvp you know so what does that tell you there you know that it's not the pattern you know the priority <laughs> the, yeah. the ui pattern i mean right but how how you structure uh, your project and how you separate your components uh in such a way where you know you, you can you can just plug whatever you want in the ui perfect got it yeah uh, if so, you separate uh, well your architecture and your components in your modules it doesn't matter if you're using mvc mvvm or mvp <laughs> yeah that's, that's right. the point they all uh, can work have... pretty, pretty nicely perfect so i in my day current day-to-day uh, -day project uh, in the work life so i'm really glad to have a good people in the team as well as we all as an agreement we started um, removing uh, module wise and putting into your different parts like for example the main app will be with the less number of uh, modules or like less num less number of code lines of code everything will be in a different module and we also have a freedom like module can choose like who are working on that based on the consistency without disturbing the consistency they can have some freedom like if they want to change or if they want to move something in this module so we also have that one but during that time what problem we faced 
it's like um, again for the new developer if he tries to download all the different modules or different uh, parts then again everything will be different for him that is what uh, uh, one one challenge what we have we had recently and uh, another thing is like this is uh, not with the design patterns completely different when we have a uh, multiple modules and um, parts which are hosted on different ci cd pipelines uh that time also i see a lot of redundant code like unknowingly we will end up in a more yeah. chunk of code which has written in all modules so in that case do you have any tips small tips for that i i i i'm not giving a bigger picture but consider that we have a five or six parts which is finally incorporated into one main app and we would like to avoid the redundant of code we don't say like put all redundant in one more part one more part right yeah hey I, i recommend that you can separate into separate pods or separate packages or separate whatever distribution you're using there cartage whatever different projects but keep everything into the same repository if you can you know the mono repo we have okay. one repository even though you break down your application into many packages they are independent you can still keep all that logic in the same repository so when you clone your repository you can run like pod install or cartage and uh, or spm you know swiss packet manager and it will automatically load everything in the same repository it's not and you can yeah exactly yeah. Edit it also in the same repository you don't need to say oh we need to update the package one so i need to change something deploy again so the other package can get it you know it's too much maintenance i agree with you but uh, one more advantage what we have is uh, individual team for example different uh, one other team wants to work on a one particular feature they can take it and they can have their own repo they can initiate a ci cd uh, for that particular repo and then unit coverage and all they can improve for that at the end they can have it in main repo even i felt even that is also one one advantage for having multiple repos Yeah, you can do the same you just need to configure your ci it's going to be a little bit advanced configuration in your ci server yeah that you can perform some diffs and actually just run the tests for the things that changed for the repository for the project that changed even though they are in the same repository you can configure your ci in a way that is going to only going to run the tests that you want okay and here comes my actual question like uh, if you are working with one or two members in a team how to improve uh, my devops knowledge like uh, if, if you, especially if you are less number of in team and uh, how can i improve devops knowledge like do you suggest to go and learn separately or how i think every developer nowadays should learn about devops you know ci cd not just about configuring servers but like remember the continuous integration ci it's not a tool it's not like a server right it's a practice practice of merging your code several times a day with tests to back up the changes and do everything automatically and then you have cd continuous deployment and continuous delivery where you're continuously building automatically the builds and sending it to the app store automatically without ceremonies you know And I think that every team nowadays that is not doing CI and CD, they are wasting time. They're yep. they're behind, you know. They're yep. they're behind. So that's why, it's, especially for small teams, like if you're not Uber, if you're not Facebook, where they hire DevOps engineers, if not working for these massive teams with like 300 engineers, you're working small teams with like one, two, three people. You're not going to have a DevOps engineer. So it's up to the developers to set up those pipelines to automate everything. And by learning this, you're going to become more valuable in the industry because, as I said, every team that's not doing it is already wasting time and falling behind. So exactly. I think Understood. it's important to learn it, and it's just like any other skills, you know. All of this is in the program. Have you finished the program? Uh, not yet, and uh, I saw uh, like uh, even in the first time when you guys CI/CD invoked, 
i saw the i mean when i am starting from uh, um, sequentially when i was watching in uh, one video where i watched you guys enabled cicd and then i saw that video yeah so you see an example right they need to practice <laughs> yeah exactly go exactly. back to the concept if you want to learn if you want to learn the concept part first i recommend trunkbaseddevelopment.com okay i think it's yeah trunkbaseddevelopment.com yeah excellent you learn a bunch of like continuous integration and configurations like how to configure your whole like team process to accommodate continuous integration and deployment and yeah you can learn all this in the program as well the only thing exactly. we cannot do for you is this one <laughs> right right i got it and the content was really nice i really appreciate that one even one second oh, thank you uh, and uh, i have one last question so, uh, in software industry i can we can see different designations software senior software software tech analyst subject matter expert PA. so there are so many designations while changing the designation the first one or two it will be like a number of years completed and you will get the new designation mm -hmm. so i would like to evaluate uh, if i want to evaluate myself like whether i will be eligible for the new role or not as a developer what skills you guys will say like those are the preliminary skills you should acquire to become a lead to become a subject matter expert to become a senior software to become a software what you guys will say how to evaluate ourselves yeah i am got eligible uh, i i should feel like that like what do you guys give input on that for me the best evaluation i get as a professional is from another professional that i respect right, right. there is like let's say there is a senior developer that i respect and i want to know their opinion from working with me what is my level right but in the industry this evaluation doesn't count that much right because you say like oh how do i know if i can pass this job interview in this company is if you pass the job interview in the company right because it's very arbitrary what a company says a senior developer and another company says a senior developer you know what a senior developer is on facebook is different than a senior developer on google or uber or exactly. other places right so it's very arbitrary the the title of senior lead it really depends it depends on the company you know that's why we created the belt system in the academy to eliminate these arbitrary titles we have titles that we are going to evaluate your skills and we're going to help you in our uh, definition of a senior as a black belt you know or as a brown belt or as a purple belt or a blue belt but this is our definition essential developer kyle and mike you know which is different exactly. than what yeah. a senior is at google or facebook or uber or any other company exactly and it's about you as well this is yes. a different thing you know that it, it 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 is tailored on on you as a professional you know and because we know that, that if you reach this black belt here, you'll be able to lead yes. any software project. Exactly. You know, any. Even in the big companies. Yeah. Even in the, the top, top companies with the top, top salaries. Yeah. But uh, again, like f for the what sort of skills you or knowledge you need to have. I don't know if you were in the virtual day we did last time, but we explained these things. Like when you complete the program, you, you're a blue build, you know, like all these things, all these practices, you start from as a blue build, you know? So becoming aware of them, it doesn't mean necessarily the, I don't know, you're like at this lead level, no. <laughs> <laughs> you I need understand. to practice and practice and practice um, and teach others, you know, mentor others and lead others. And at the same time, as you do that, 
your income, your level of income will rise. And that's the goal, you know, or rather one of the goals, I should say. <clears throat> like this, what is the difference of a blue belt and a black belt, for example? Because we say like in the program, when you finish all the program, you've been exposed to all the skills we believe you need to become the most successful lead developer you can be, right? Mm -hmm. All these skills you are asking, like, what skills do I need? It's all in the program. And when you finish the program, it means that you finish all the challenges, you're being exposed to all the skills we believe you need to be, you need to have to become a black belt. So a blue belt knows all the skills, all, all the skills that you need to become a black belt. So what? It, so why is a blue belt not a black belt? Because a black belt is extremely proficient at those skills. And a blue belt knows about the skills. They know the skills they need. But a black belt is proficient. A black belt can use those skills at work every day to achieve their goals. Yeah, they can explain it to others as well, you know. Can teach okay. others. Yeah. yeah. So when you finish the program, you're going to get your blue belt. When you finish all the challenges, you're going to be exposed to all the skills we believe you need to become a black belt. And you're going to know about all those skills. You're going to have practice all of them because all the challenges are going to make you practice CI, CD, testing, architecture, you know, adding features, changing features. And then you get your blue belt, which means you're being exposed to all, all the practices. Yeah. Then you need to practice and apply what you learn until you become extremely proficient as a black belt. So a blue belt knows everything a black belt does, but a black belt is much more proficient yeah, understand. than a blue belt. And for me, like here, as a brown belt, or even as a purple belt, you can already start becoming a lead developer. Already have the skills to lead, to yeah. help others, you know? Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, that's all from my side. Couple of questions which I encountered in my day to life are my friends. That's what uh, those questions sometimes we feel shy or shame to ask. <laughs> In, peer, in professional friends, but still, I opened up uh, in front of you so that it should help for everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so, you much, so much. It's gonna really, really help. Yep. A lot of you. people. And again, thank just you. know that it's normal. Like we all, we all feel, you know, all of that yeah. you said. Like, yeah. we've been doing this for a long time here on YouTube. Like, but every time we go live, we still have that, you know, that feeling like, oh my god. <laughs> Is this the day someone's gonna call me like an imposter or something like that? <laughs> yeah, obviously. It right. still happens. <laughs> yeah, you are right. All right. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kayo and Mike. And I really like the contents what you have created for us. And uh, still I have completed off of that and then I'll complete morning. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you That's so much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Repeat. Guys. <laughs> Repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.